What is up, people? It's Mike, Matt, and Nick back again. <laughs> we are doing, we are Raf Soup, and we're doing a video, a little more casual video today. Uh, the topic of the video is why old heads hate modern music. When J. Cole and Corday had those songs, old, old people and, and young people or whatever, when they were going back and forth talking about just like, J. Cole's like, don't blow all your money. And then Corday's like, stop giving a fuck about what we do with our money. We're young. You know, it brought a lot of discussion. A lot of the people that grew up in the 90s listening to that music, they're not that into modern stuff. Not that there's nothing. Like, I'm sure a lot of them are into Kendrick and, you know, but they hated the SoundCloud era. They hate the 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 trap, uh, like hype trap shit, like Cardi and Trippy Red and Yachty and you Uzi, you know, all that it's, it doesn't work at all for them. As people of our age, we didn't grow up in the nineties. We grew up listening to like mid, early, mid two thousand stuff. When we like, finally, you know, we're able to recognize what music was and like pick our own songs and stuff. So it's kind of interesting to see how they like it. And personally, I love both, but I totally see the sides of both of them. Like I understand if somebody, some like, 14 year old loves Uzi. He's not going to like naughty by nature. He's not going to like mob deep. You know, he's not going to like all that stuff, but it, it, at the same time, if you do like that, I get why you would hate the new music. What are you guys thoughts? Yeah. To me, it's not as so much about the music. Well, I guess for me, and I think that there's probably, I kind of a more, I'm kind of more on the old head side because my main shit that I like in rap music is lyrics and I guess there's arguments for both sides, but dude, SoundCloud era, even the two thousands, just any rap that is more for partying or like a, like, like vibe music, the lyrics aren't strong. The, the lyrical content is flat. It's kind of one dimensional. Almost like uh, country music. That's not a great comparison, but it's all very similar. It's all a lot of the same lyrical content. And I think people like it more for the production, the trap beats. Because, ah, dude, even if you are old head, how can you not like trap beats? The beats, the beats the past 10 years are insane. I don't like the SoundCloud era. There's songs here and there. I don't like, I don't, I don't care for little Uzi's music, Trippy Red's music, Playboy Cardi's music, Yeet's music, any of this stuff. I don't like it. NBA, it's not for me. I like ultra lyrical stuff. And I think that's why they don't like it because these people who are grew up in the eighties, nineties rap was it was rap. It wasn't just a, a new wave of just music that is like hip hop where people's rap isn't top notch. I want to hear visual stories. I want to hear flows, cadences. I don't want to hear the same flows and cadences over and over. I don't want to hear trippy shit. I don't know. I, I think they dislike it for the same reasons I do, which is flat lyrical content and repetitiveness. Let, but, but let me say, I, I have no issue with it. I used to have more of an issue with it, but a lot of it grew on me. I don't hate it. There's just some stuff I really don't care for. Playboy Cardi's music. Don't like that at all. NBA young boy music. Don't like that at all. But the other stuff has grown on me. At one point I wasn't into Migos. Love Migos now. Uh, Lil Uzi Vert hasn't grown on me. There's a few things that are fine. But I never go and listen to it. Yeet, that'll never grow on me. Um, Trippy Red, that'll never grow on me. But some of the other stuff... What's that guy's name? Moneybag Yo? I used to dislike that. That shit's sick. It's because it's like a... Diff it, it's somewhat impressive rapping. Even if it's flat, it's like, 
all that stuff is highly influenced by Houston, Memphis, Atlanta. And there was one point where that stuff was really cool and new. And then I think all these rappers today grew up listening to that and they had whatever influences, older influences in their life they had was were listening to that. So that's kind of what they mimicked, like Project Pat and all that. It's not that different from music today, but it's like the original version. I think it's better, but it just gets kind of old. And I feel like the creativity lays elsewhere. I feel like the creativity in the 90s and and stuff was more rampant. And I think today it's just a lot of mimicking and whatever. But like I said, I don't have an issue with most of it. It's just some of it I don't like at all. And I don't see myself ever liking it. And the main reason is because I'm not looking for the vibe aspect, the ass shake aspect. I'm sometimes I am, but I'm primarily listening to music for the lyrics, for the flows, the cadences. And I want rappers to tell stories and paint murals with their words. Uh, I mean, I kind of agree with you guys. I also prefer more lyrical rapping as opposed to some of the newer stuff where it is more about the music and just the vibe in general but i kind of feel like rap music has taken the same trajectory as like rock music did back in the 60s 70s 80s where you know, it kind of started more focused and it wasn't as big of a deal. So people were saying more and trying to do more kind of like how hip hop was in the nineties. And then, you know, as it gained in popularity, more and more people started to do it. It became more commercialized. These big labels started pumping more and more money in. Nobody was writing their own songs. There's a team of people put together to create this bigger sound that everyone liked, that the masses liked, and they would sell the most records. And that's what we're kind of seeing now with rap music. You do kind of have to go to kind of like how in the 2000s, 2010s, you had to go to like the indie scene to get some of that non-commercialized rock music that so many people like nowadays you have to go to the indie scene for rap like to see hear the music like jpeg mafia griselda before they were big freddie gibbs like all all our favorite rappers well, all not all of them but most of our favorite rappers are not dropping on major labels or if they are it's like top dog dreamville you know these labels that are big because they were started by big rappers but they're good rappers and they're labels for really good rap so i don't know i don't think like matt said i don't think you need to hate on the new commercialized music because that's just the way music works and it's still good like, I mean, not, I don't like all of it, but there's still a lot of good stuff in there. And it's just kind of how there's always going to be music you like and don't like. So, yeah, I, I couldn't agree more with the rock comparison. I just think that the timeline's a little longer for rap. Like, um, rock was, let's say rock started really with the Beatles in what, 1963 or four by 1968, 69, it had progressed so much. There was like the Beatles, the animals. And to me, that shit's so basic and I don't care for it at all. But then like Zeppelin. Well, you could Sabbath, say the same about like MC Hammer and Will that's Smith what I'm getting. That's what I'm, that's what I'm getting at. So but it progressed on that same timeline. So it was that stuff from like 1963 to like 1967. And then it was like Jimi Hendrix, Cream. Led Zeppelin, Black Sabbath, all of them started coming out in the late sixties and early seventies. And then it was like insane. The, the, some of my favorite music ever just like came out the golden era of recording started 
and it was just insane how much it progressed in a short time with rap it was like sugar hill gang came out and then it was run dmc and it was like very basic rap but it was like a new thing whereas like it was a completely new thing whereas rock kind of came from like blues and jazz and shit which was already around for a long time rap started as its own thing very basic run dmc sugar hill very simple rhymes some funk samples and shit and then you get into uh rock kim and big daddy kane and then the rhyming gets crazier and then a few years later you get to like tupac biggie and it's like this timeline but i feel like where rap is now in like the soundcloud era i don't know if it's where rock was at that far like 30 40 50 years in i don't know i feel like rock reached rap has like these transitional periods where it's like the whole 90s so right now we're listening to 1996 for our series our album of the year series i feel like once we finish 1996 once we get into that post biggie era when like dmx and jay-z come into the picture i feel like that's when rap really really started to get commercialized and um then eminem comes out and it's like ultra commercial but it's still like everyone's really talented like the really talented people are commercial and then it gets to like 50 cent and then it reaches like the absolute climax of the commercialization of rap and then after that let's say like 2004 to like the rest of the 2000s the shit that you hear on the radio was like random kind of dance songs and club hits um like chingy uh hurricane chris like shit like that people that didn't last like kind of one hit wonder type rap and then you get to the 2010s and then the next thing that happens is Kendrick and J. Cole, it's like, wow, rap is kind of being revived. And then it starts this whole new wave of people that are like ultra lyrical and people are more interested in lyrics and stuff. But then at the same time, you also get like Chief Keef and then drill music comes out. And then that just goes this whole other way for the new, our generation. It's just like, it goes from like radio and kind of like softer, like party music to like the hardest of the core music and then from there everything is just influencing and the 2010s were like this this uh just this bubble of it was just like a transition period where there are so many different ways to transition it reached a point where it was like you have all your 90s influences you have all your 2000s influences and then you have this new influence which is drill and then you get all this new shit you get Atlanta starts coming like Atlanta music start becomes like the dominant one along with drill music. But then at the same time, you still have all these other guys, Drake, who ended up going that route. And then there's guys that stayed like Kendrick and J. Cole and all that. But everyone it's, there reached a point in the later mid 2010s where really talented rappers started working with not so lyrical rappers and then the SoundCloud era came and it's just like, I don't know what happened. I maybe we need more time to see what happened, but I don't know it, it, I got... what I was, what I was getting at is it was just, there was so there was the 2010s, like the mid, like that SoundCloud era, like 2015, 16 to 2019 or whatever, such a transition period. So I don't think that we've had enough time yet to see where that goes. I just think that that era really, influenced a lot like the whole new generation it's just a little flat but i think that hip-hop is always going to be progressing and i think there's gonna there tons of super talented rappers and lyrical rappers like nick said they're still there you just kind of have to look to the indie stuff but who knows what happens next with like the commercial rap and what you're fed I don't know. They're, like they both said, there's no reason to like be upset. I just think that it's a point in the genre where it's 
I think we're towards the end of that transition and you're going to start to see more, but apparently there's talk of the main three of the 2010s, Kendrick, J. Cole, Drake retiring. I don't believe it because how often does that happen? But either way, I think those guys were big enough to influence enough people in the future to keep on the true lyrical rap that everyone could appreciate. And I think it'll just always be there. But for now, the SoundCloud era is kind of the dominant on charts and, and stuff like that. So I don't know. I'm more of an old head for my age, but I also learned to not really have an issue with that section of the genre. That's really not that impressive, but I also get why people like it. It's just not for me and it never will be. Yeah. I think there's four, four main things that were, were, were different from like nineties stuff to what's going on. I'm going to use Tupac in as an example. First, way it used to be way more about lyrics. Like people cared. The word MC meant something. People cared about what they had to say. People cared about coming up with the cleverest lines, the newest shit, the best way to say something. You know, how do you, how do I take this concept and morph it into something that's going to like bend someone's mind and keep them be like, whoa. You know, sometimes it even goes over their head, and that's. That's when you know you have good lines because it's it's you have to like decipher. It takes a little more effort to actually understand what they're saying. You know, it's not so just plain bluntly laid out for you. Number two, way more effort on albums. We just ran through all of Tupac's albums from when he was alive. He put so much effort into creating like full albums of coherent thoughts with the same theme, stories. You know, it, the, the cohesion was amazing. Like, from beginning to end, it all made sense wrapped up in one album. Now, I feel like there's just, like, filler songs in there. There'll, there'll be a serious song, and then here's something that's like, oh, blah, 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 and it's all fun and shit. But, like, it doesn't make sense together. Like, there, you know, there's no cohesion there. Number three, ad-libs. I like ad-libs. I think they're funny. But ad-libs are a way for you to have shorter sentences in your lines it you can't having ad libs means like you probably can't connect your bars as well when you have them in the background like the, it's that there's like a break in your flow when that doesn't exist you have to keep rapping or there's just dead sound in the song and no one wants to hear that like i think of ad libs as filler and i'm not hating on ad libs like migos ad libs stuff like that all time that's shout some out of the to, best shit shout out to young dolph's ad libs yeah, there's, you know, it's not against ad-libs, but it's just part of what made the music different. And number four, the samples. I love Metro Boomin's beats. I think he's one of the most talented producers that has ever existed. Most of his stuff, he just created himself. He's not taking vinyl records from like 70s jazz bands, putting them on there and twisting it up and making it the sounds. It's a lot of, you know, drum, kick, bass, blah, blah, blah. Not, It's not repetitive, but it's... They're, they're, they're similar sounds. It's undeniable. But when you go through the 90s, every song is sampled from some older song. It's not just the producer coming up with everything on himself. He took a crazy sound, he twisted it, and it made it to be one of the best beats of all time. Like, the beat selection was just so dang different. You know, it was way, I feel like it was more effortful, more unique. You know, you could, a wider range of sounds altogether. So I think those are the four the four biggest things that are different from early rap to modern rap. Boom, boom bap versus trap. It's the music is going to change as the technology does. Yeah, I still think people nowadays could sample more. Not that no one is. People 100% are. Like, big time albums 100% are. But when people just drop these, like, quick EPs and stuff, it's kind of it's a lot of the same. I don't, they might be sampling more than we think they are. I like when it's I'm, obvious, though. Like, I like being yeah. like, hearing that sound, be like, what song is that? Like, I've heard this sound before. And going back, and it's some, you know, yeah. Smokey Robinson sound or something like that. I'm with you. It it makes it more fun to listen. There's like I, a game in there. Know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I forgot when I was going on my rant, that wasn't even like 
coordinated that probably might not have even made that much sense and got off track. Forgot to mention that part of that transition period was definitely 808s and Heartbreaks by Kanye. I think that album totally influenced a lot of the rappers today. Mm -hmm. Juice World, all that that shit. Yeah, that and then what Drake was doing, which was heavily influenced by 808s, definitely made it a lot more okay for rappers to start singing in their songs. Because before then, I mean, who was singing in their songs that was a rapper? Like, no one. (laughs) No one. Yeah. So, yeah. Which I was fine with, but it's okay. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Singing has its place, but, like, Travis Scott is a singer. Like, when you, like, he's obviously, he's a rapper. He sings so much and it's not like it's obvious seeing where he's like holding notes like aretha franklin and shit but like the end of his his lines like he holds the note long enough that it, it is singing it's you know, like a weird tune yeah it's like a weird middle ground between rapping and singing kind of in the same way that like the red hot chili peppers anthony kiedis does i think that is probably another thing that really turns off a lot of the old heads it, it's not just some guy spitting into the microphone it's a little more melodic yeah, yeah. people also never used autotune so that's another point auto tune the melodies <laughs> used to kind of come in the in the form of hooks that were more wrapped but they weren't so much singing it would just be like lyrics put together to make a melody and now it's like actual singing it's fine a lot of the time, but some of it, it's just not so much for me. Yeah, it's just it's just very different than what a lot of people grew up on. So I get it. I know, like, I feel like we're we're 27, 26, 27. We're at that weird age where we were before old shit. We're too old, too young for the old shit and too old for the new shit. But what the, our stuff wasn't like the best <laughs> period. So we we have to like venture out and form our own thing because it's like, you know, we, we were, dude, we were born in 96, like ready to die was still two years before we were even born and we're hugely into it. But like, we're in our twenties. We're not going to like yeet. Like I, I'm not a high school Twitter kid. Like I'm, I'm not listening to yeet. No. Yeah. Yeah, dude. And we also are just, we definitely are in a very small percentage of people that have really dove into every single corner of rap and have tried to listen to as much as we possibly could. Most people do not do this. (laughs) (laughs) Most people don't do this. No. So shout out to everyone that's listening that does because you become more educated on the genre as a whole and just liking something from every year will just make you like rap more if you get pigeonholed into a single style a single generation and you don't care about it but you're still going to argue about it over twitter get tossed (laughs) expand your horizons learn new stuff there's i said you could be the biggest uzi fan and i guarantee i could find you a couple albums from the 90s that you would like just as much and i guarantee if you're a you know, all you listened to Tupac was growing up. I guarantee I could find something in the last year or two that you will love. Yeah, I mean, there's something out there for everyone every single year. There are so many people making music. I really doubt there's someone that genuinely hates everything that was released in 2022. There's no way. Only people yeah. that are reigning supreme in the ignorance department yeah and i would there i wouldn't even call those people hip-hop fans they just like a certain sound and that's all they listen to because the internet told them it was cool yeah all you gotta do is listen to the state of hip-hop interlude from rock kim's the master in 1999 (laughs) it's kind of it's kind of a timeless quote it'll change your life yeah, it's just about expanding your horizons and being open to different sounds because you, you listen to it enough, you're going to find out what you like, and then you could go on, find similar sounds. And no matter if you like new or old, 
you're going to figure you're going to find something new because there is so much rap music out there. Like we're, we're running through albums at an alarming rate right now. And there's so many that we don't even have time to listen to. Yeah. It's almost annoying. <laughs> Dude. It's, it's completely fine to pick and choose what you like. Like it's so fine for people to dislike playboy Cardi's music, but it's also fine for the people that are into playboy Cardi to dislike Eminem or, uh, Jay-Z or something like things that are more impressive, but it's also, it's just, it's subjective, but I don't know. I think it's kind of objective to say that those guys are more impressive. Um, no, they're but better, a, but it's impressive to create a whole, a whole new sound, but still there's shit for everyone that you just don't know about. We would love to know your thoughts on the subject because it is quite touchy to a lot of people, you know, from 12 year olds to 52 year olds, people grew up in different times, listening to different stuff and liking different sounds. So please let us know your thoughts. If you got it all, got all the way through this video. Maybe give us a comment. We will reply. We reply to all the comments. Please give us a like. If you thought this was cool, subscribe. If you're the and, best person ever, you'd share it. But I guess that's a lot to ask. Let us know in the comments who you think is the biggest old head out of the three of us. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you for watching.